Hello, this is Graham Brown from UpSchool, and this is UpSchoolBookReviews.com. Every week I bring you a new book for you to become a better lifestyle entrepreneur. So I share the best business books, books that I've read personally, books that have helped me, books that I recommend. And we can't really talk about lifestyle entrepreneurs without talking about this next book, The 4-Hour Workweek by Tim Ferriss. Now, I think a lot of people know this book. A lot more people know this book than have read this book. And there's a reason behind that. Tim Ferriss, I mean, he's a great self-promoter. He's a guy who hangs out with the likes of Arnie Schwarzenegger, You know, just have a look at the people that he's interviewed in his latest book, Tools of Titans. You get an understanding of the company that he keeps. Well, this was his first book, The 4-Hour Workweek. And Entrepreneur Magazine described Tim Ferriss as Man of the Year way back in, I can't remember, 2007, 2008 when it was published. So this was, go back, 2007, 2008. What Tim Ferriss did when he published this book, The 4-Hour Workweek, he opened the doors. He opened the floodgates. He started the debate. He brought this idea to the consciousness of a generation that they didn't need, we didn't need to work a job for life to get satisfaction. And what it did was open up a whole debate about what we want out of life, what was important in our pyramid of needs, and so on. And I think from this emerged this idea of the lifestyle entrepreneur. Even though Tim Ferriss didn't define it in this book, and it's very much been refined by derivative works, like, for example, The $100 Startup or The 7-Day Startup, which I also review here. But first, let's have a look at what's actually inside the four-hour work week. The whole premise of the work, the four-hour work week is this, is that a lot of what we do is noise. And this is a, a theme refined in Essentialism by Greg McKeon, which is also a book that I review here on Upschool Book Reviews. Most of what we do is noise. So if we were just to focus on what was value and reduce the noise, eliminate the noise, then we don't have to work crazy hours and we could do work that we really enjoyed doing. So Tim Ferriss splits this up into his DEAL acronym. D for define, E for eliminate, A for automate and L for liberate. Let's talk about each one of those. D, definition. Define. And the key thing here is what Tim Ferriss describes as reality. And he says that reality is negotiable. So your idea of success is not some monolithic story which is immovable and agreed by everybody, even though it's a popular narrative. So the popular narrative about success is, you know, you go to school, you go to college, you work hard, get good grades, go to a good company, work hard, get promoted, et cetera, et cetera. But the key to the four-hour work work week is to define success on your own terms. And it's key here. To define your success, you have to first define it. It's a story that you can tell. But if you don't tell your story, somebody else does it for you. And those narratives, those life scripts that I've talked about already, like go to school, go to college, etc. Those are the default life scripts that we adopt if we don't define success on our own terms. And the four-hour work week is very much about defining success on your own terms. And one of the tools that Tim Ferriss uses for this is what he calls the Dreamline Worksheet. And you can get examples of this in the 4-Hour Workweek book on his website. I also provide examples of this on my Entrepreneur Upgrade course on Upschool. And what it is, is very simply writing down what you want out of life. Sounds very basic. But as I said, if you don't do it, somebody else is going to do it for you. You'll end up living somebody else's agenda. 
So the first step is D, define. Second step is E for elimination. Tim Ferriss says, doing something unimportant well does not make it important. And this follows through from that whole heritage of books, fantastic books like the the Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And more recently, Gary Keller's The One Thing. I also mentioned earlier, Essentialism by Greg McKeon. This whole idea that most of what we do is noise. And therefore, the challenge to improve, the challenge to get ahead is not to work harder or smarter, but somehow to eliminate that noise, to understand what the noise is and eliminate it. And this is tough because what it requires of us as entrepreneurs is the hardest thing. The easiest thing is to say yes. Yes to every opportunity. Yes to every customer, every client, every project. That's what we tend to do as a default reaction, a knee-jerk reaction as entrepreneurs. Say yes to everything. Whereas what Tim Ferriss stresses in the four-hour work week is to say no. Say no to grow. You only grow as an entrepreneur when you are able to say no to things. So were you able to fire clients or fire customers or say no to getting an office or say no to hiring somebody? That is when you grow because every single no creates a little bit of space, leaves a little bit of space left on the table for you to say yes to that burning issue, that big yes that's burning you inside. And the difficult part, Tim Ferriss says, is it's not just about projects, but it's also about people. So a lot of the people in our lives, like projects or potential customers, are also noise. So to get ahead, unfortunately, this is the hard thing. We have to say no to people. In the easiest sense of that hard thing, it's simply saying no to a meeting. In the most difficult sense, it's saying goodbye to somebody who's not good for us in our life. A lot of those people hold us back. There's a a great Jim Rohn saying, which is that we are the sum of the five people that we hang around with on a daily basis. So think about those five people. Their attitudes, their expectations, their worldviews define ours. We are the sum of those people. So if you want to get ahead, one of the most difficult things for us as entrepreneurs is saying no to people because they hold us back. Tim Ferriss says it's far better to get a reputation for being difficult than it is to get a reputation for being a yes man and flaking on everybody. There's a great Seth Godin quote that I want to throw in here. He says... Don't go to meetings, don't watch TV, and do something every day that scares you. The third part of the 4-Hour Work Week acronym is A for automation. Now, if you want to create any kind of wealth in your life, you have to get automation down pat. You've got to get it worked out. Because the biggest challenge that entrepreneurs have is this. There's only one of them and there's only 24 hours in the day. That natural law will never change. You'll never have more hours and you'll never be able to clone yourself yet. So we're left with this restriction that time and us, we're democratically distributed. Everybody has the same. So it's how we use that time effectively that differentiates us as a lifestyle entrepreneur, as a successful lifestyle entrepreneur from everybody else. And you've got to get your head around this idea of leverage. And I'll talk about this when we come to talk about Robert Kiyosaki and Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Any kind of wealth generation, financial business, you need leverage. What is leverage? Leverage means the ability to do more with the same amount of resources. I like to put it like this, make money while you sleep. Now, I do this personally through investing in real estate property because real estate property makes money while I sleep. It's an asset. 
In your business, you can also create assets. I'll talk about those in a minute. I want to throw in this great Warren Buffett quote. If you don't find and make money, sorry, let me start again. This great Warren Buffett quote. If you don't find a way to make money while you sleep, you will work until you die. So think about this. In the Robert Kiyosaki sense, rich dad, poor dad, this is about building pipelines, not carrying buckets. Entrepreneurs like to carry buckets of water to fill the well. Investors build pipelines. A pipeline takes a lot longer to build. It's a lot more money to build. And you have to give up a lot to create a pipeline. Time, money, etc. And you don't see the return straight away. Whereas carrying buckets, the return's immediate. But it never increases. You can never carry more buckets. You can never have more time in the day to carry buckets. It's like selling your time for money. Even if you get a lot of money for each hour that you sell, you'll always be limited by the amount of hours that you can sell. However, if you build a pipeline, it doesn't matter. You can pump as much water as you can through that pipeline. Great pipeline newsletter. A newsletter is the most obvious application of a pipeline for a lifestyle entrepreneur. If you can build a newsletter, you can make money whilst you're asleep because newsletters sell. I don't care what people say about social media, but newsletters, email marketing is the most effective way of selling there is. And the reason is, is because it works whilst you sleep. You can create a dialogue with somebody. You can have a conversation with a potential customer whilst you're sleeping. Whilst you're listening to this podcast, that email may be autoresponder dripping out to your customer and creating a dialogue with that person whilst you're doing something else. You could be doing that with one newsletter subscriber, a hundred or a hundred thousand. It's all the same, but you couldn't do the same with your time, you couldn't do a presentation to one people or a hundred people or a hundred thousand people or have one meeting with one person or a hundred thousand people. There's a natural limit to that. So newsletters are great ways of building marketing pipelines. And I like to think of marketing pipelines as funnels because funnels are great visualizations of what those pipelines do. And I talk more about this in the Entrepreneur Upgrade course. Well, if you go and check out my five book review course, my free course, you'll also go and find out a bit about marketing pipelines in that as well. The key here is about investing in assets. Whether you invest in assets financially or in your business, the key to living the four-hour work week is having assets that make money whilst you sleep. Having a business that is semi-automated or automated as possible and having assets that grow in value and create income whilst you're doing something else. You, you might not be sleeping, you might be doing something else, working on another project, sitting on a beach, having a meeting, eating dinner with your family, whatever it is. What happens is, is as you grow your business, your business doesn't then take away time and make you more and more busy. So it becomes scalable. The fourth part of the DEAL acronym in the four hour work week is L for liberation. Tim Ferriss says, think big. Don't listen to people who tell you it can't be done. Life is too short to think small. Now I've gone through this. Now four hour work week was written in 2007, 2008. I can't remember exactly. And I exited my business in 2012 I went and traveled the world with my family for five years. And it all started with this question. And I warn you that this is a dangerous question to ask. What if? What if? What if I had a business which didn't need to be based in London? i.e. didn't need to be based in an expensive city, in the center of an expensive city. And the reason I had that business is because all my clients were online, all over the world. 
I didn't need to meet them face to face. I could do virtual meetings by Skype. I service most of them online. What if I had that kind of business? I wouldn't need to be in London. And if I didn't need to be in London, I didn't need to have an office. If I didn't have an office, what if I didn't have an office? Well, I wouldn't need an office manager. I wouldn't need to, you know, spend the first $10,000 a month on maintaining the office. And therefore, if I don't need that $10,000 a month just to go into the office, I didn't need to then do $10,000 of work I don't want to do. So I can jettison that area of the business so I can get rid of the office. I can get rid of all that sort of low value stuff that adds up to $10,000. Get rid of that. And now I don't need to be in London. Well, if I don't need to be in London, what if I could live anywhere in the world? And this is a dangerous question because that whole idea of liberation pulls everything apart. Everything falls apart beautifully when you ask what if. What if goes back to the idea of reality is negotiable. You can redefine reality on your own basis and once you start realizing once you start creating this automated business where you eliminate noise and you define success on your own terms that's the d e and a definition elimination and automation once you build that kind of business the liberation is really just a what if question because everything that you know about business everything that defines business and success and what we accept as established business is really blown apart you don't need an office you don't need a big staff you don't need to be in a geographical location and therefore you don't need to live there and you don't need to pay through the nose for an expensive mortgage loan or rent or commute etc to live in that area you could live anywhere in the world and that is how for our work week open the floodgates on the whole location independent lifestyle entrepreneur scene because a whole generation of entrepreneurs asked well actually if i don't need to be based here in san francisco paying three thousand dollars a month rent i could be living in thailand paying three hundred dollars in rent and build my business there and that is what people did they asked what if but you can't enjoy the fruits of your labor, the four-hour work week, the D, the define, eliminate, and automation, if you don't then ask the liberation question, what if? That is the four-hour work week. Hopefully, that has sparked some interest in you. If you haven't read the book, go and read the book. If you have read the book, it's time to review. Don't stop there. There are far more things to discover the far more ideas to discover one book can change your life this is a ten dollar book it could change your life and that is why books are a fantastic investment go and check out my free book review course on upschoolbookreviews.com slash course it's free it's five books that i'm passionate about that i want to share with you that can make you help you become a better entrepreneur my name is Graham Brown. Join me next week for a next installment on upschoolbookreviews.com.